The basic for each syntax that you know will import the value of the array element into the loop for you to use in your operation. However, as you know, an array can also have a key for that element, since the array works on a name value pair basis. What happens if you want the key in the array as well? Well, there's a simple addition to the for each loop that you can use. The key variable, followed by an equal sign, followed by a greater than, and then the value variable. You recognize the syntax from the array assignment syntax when you're adding an array element with a specifically named key. In this case, as you loop through, you'll be able to reference the key as well as the element value in the array. Where is this useful? Well, do you remember back to our functional website chapter? We talked about stripping values of the slashes as they came into the page. This is where you can use this type of for each to do that. Do for each our post super global as x for the name, y as the value. So we set post x, which will end up as post, and then the name equal to strip slashes y, which is the value. Neaten it up and there you go. That's how you can strip slashes from all of your posted variables. So we do it this way because if we had just done the strip slashes, the actual variable would not have changed because in a for loop this y value is only a copy of the actual array value. So we needed to know the key name in order to reassign that modified value into our original array. There are many other instances that you would need this as well and you'll recognize those when you come across them. One other thing that you need to know with for each loop is that it will not descend automatically into a multidimensional array if you have more than one dimension to an array. Here we have a multidimensional array. Now a for each loop will report each of these values of the elements as array. We can prove that by looping through it and printing out the value. You can see we have array, array, array. Three array members and they're all arrays. We're not getting the actual values. So to solve this, you can nest for each loops within each other. If you're not sure whether the element was an array or not though, you'd need to check the variable type to see if you need to loop it through. Something like this. I already have it pre-written here. So this will delve into that additional level and print out the names and values. What we're doing here is again starting our original for each using a function called isArray on the value passed in to see if it is an array and if it is then we're going to loop through and get the name value pairs for each one. We're passing in from x which remember is an array it's called a reference to an array. We want to get the name and value, which would be name, value, name, value, name, value. Or else, if we find that the type is not an array, then we're just going to print it right out. So we save that, go back, and here we go. Name, value, name, value of each of our elements of our multidimensional array. When you're looping through an array, you really should have an idea of its structure. Otherwise, if it's an array with too many dimensions, you could get lost trying to retrieve the values. If you're not sure of an array's structure, be sure to use the printr function to get familiar with it before blindly throwing it into a for each loop.